Bien, pues ya parece que estamos todos, así que bueno, daros lo primero la bienvenida a todos eh, a este workshop sobre continuous testing, sobre dispositivos móviles, we can. Y bueno, yo soy Carlos Reyes Jiménez, soy el líder técnico de movilidad en AT Sistemas y bueno, quería presentaros a los ponentes y los que van a realizar este workshop, que son Jordi Borja, que es el director para el sur de Europa de Digital AI, y Alex Bersenev, que es un Continuous Testing Specialist, también ahí en Digital AI. Así que, bueno, eh, sin más, podéis empezar cuando queráis con, con este workshop. Eh, bueno, eh, un placer estar con vosotros en este DevOps Space, la tercera edición. Eh, ya soy un clásico de anteriores eh, ediciones y, bueno, eh, venimos aquí a explicaros algo diferente. ¿no? El año pasado, bueno, hace dos, estuvimos hablando de el viaje de, de DevOps y esta, esta noche tendremos mi keynote, pero hoy ahora estamos centrándonos en una solución eh, totalmente diferente que es para continuous testing sobre dispositivos móviles. La compañía eh, Albernev, que es eh, especialista en, en continuous testing, el eh, español español no, no habla mucho. Eh, entonces decidimos en un principio que yo iba a hacer la traducción simultánea pero eh, al final, bueno, yo creo que se le entiende perfectamente y creo que va a ser mucho más brillante y efectivo que podáis seguirle. Yo estoy, en cualquier caso, un poco para remarcar eh, cualquier eh, tipo de, de información que pueda ser relevante o para atender las preguntas, pero la demo la va a hacer eh, Alex. Al final es, es muy sencilla de seguir porque son cosas que seguro que conocéis y bueno, espero que, que os guste. Eh, bueno, no me veo a mí mismo ni a Alex, pero, pero bueno, da igual. Eh, lo que os queríamos comentar es que eh, Digital.ai es una compañía que se forma a partir de cinco, de cinco compañías ya existentes. Estas compañías, eh, yo vengo de una de ellas, eh, que es Sevilla Labs, que es eh, quizá la que más relacionada está con temas de DevOps, eh, que teníamos una solución de orquestación y de despliegue automático pero eh, también se incorporan en, este, en esta compañía eh, versus One Colabnet, que es una solución de agilidad, de Enterprise Agile Planning, Arxan, que es para eh, protección de aplicaciones, de móviles, eh, Experites, que es la solución que vamos a ver hoy, que, eh, que, eh, para pruebas sobre dispositivos móviles y, y browsers, y Numerify eh, para temas de eh, analítica e inteligencia artificial, más allá. Bien, eh, no os voy a, a, a contar el rollo, yo creo que lo que importa eh, en, en el día de hoy es que veamos la solución, que nos centremos en, en el topic, que, que, que por eso eh, me imagino que estáis aquí en, este, en esta sesión. Simplemente comentaros que toda la solución de, de Digital.ai eh, está totalmente integrada a través de lo que llamamos Lens, que nos proporciona una serie de información, unos dashboards eh, ya predefinidos, y además, sobre esos dashboards y esas analíticas de datos, hemos construido soluciones de inteligencia artificial. Hablaré sobre ello esta noche, no de nuestra solución, sino por qué la inteligencia artificial es clave dentro del de concepto de Value Stream Management. Simplemente para que conozcáis un poco lo que vais a ver, porque son cosas que evidentemente no la podemos meter en la demo, Comentaros que si test es la, la solución mejor valorada por los usuarios eh, en todos los eh, eh, review, peer reviews, eh, tenemos más de 1.000 clientes en todo el mundo, eh, tenemos, ofrecemos un, un servicio de lo que es un device lab eh, eh, con data centers que están distribuidos por todo el mundo y además una característica es que no es necesario eh, tirar todo el esfuerzo que teníamos previamente eh, desarrollado con scripts sobre frameworks como Atom, Selenium, Espresso, eh, etc. Está totalmente integrado en el ciclo de interacción continua eh, con todas las herramientas que os podéis imaginar y, eh, bueno, pues aparte de tener la capacidad de, de utilizar dispositivos en una cloud eh, privada o una cloud eh, compartida, también tenéis la posibilidad de tener los dispositivos on-premise o una solución híbrida. ¿vale? Esto es muy importante porque muchas veces Queremos tener determinados dispositivos eh, on-premise y después disponer de otros dispositivos en el cloud. Eh, y todos se van a gestionar de la misma forma. Además, la solución que vamos a ver soporta tanto pruebas funcionales como de rendimiento como de accesibilidad. ¿vale? Todo tipo de cosas. Eh, 
Yo creo que, que esto es, al final, eh, como vais a tener las transparencias, eh, pues lo podéis eh, ver tranquilamente. De todas formas, si tenéis alguna eh, duda, después tenéis mi, mi contacto y el de Alex para, para ya entrar en lo que es la información técnica. Pero acordaros, tenemos por una parte la creación de los test eh, con eh, los Apple Home Studio y herramientas que nos permiten incluso trabajar con Codeless, la ejecución de, 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 esos, de esos test eh, y también tenemos soporte a pruebas manuales, de rendimiento, accesibilidad, etc. Y, y por supuesto lo que os comentaba, es el app de dispositivos que, en la nube. ¿eh? Yo tengo retorno, no sé por qué. Vale. Eh, yo creo que era todo lo que, lo que teníamos que, que contar eh, con transparencias. Si me permitís, os introduzco a Alex. Eh, Alex, welcome. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Hello Jordi. Uh, hello to all participants. I thank you for uh, uh, being with us today. Um, Uh, my name is Alex Beresnev and I'm a testing specialist in Europe, also a uh, sales director and helping uh, uh, to our team in Europe with all testing initiatives. So, uh, Jordi, thank you for the introduction. I will go to uh, and, and uh, perform the demo of our product of continuous testing platform. And uh, you guys, please feel free to uh, write in chat if you already uh, have some mobile testing in place in your organization or you are looking to if you have uh, any experience working with uh, Appium Selenium please uh, uh, feel free to share we'll be glad uh, then after the session to have a chat in our uh, uh, room please join us as well um, so yeah let's jump into the you demo have your camera off I think excuse me the camera is off Your camera. My camera? No, no, no I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm, I, will, I will just continue. I will just share my screen. Okay. And I want confirmation that uh, uh, you see my screen. Jordi, Carlos? Estamos viendo perfectamente. Yes, we okay. can see it. So, no worry. Okay, perfecto. Uh, so, uh, Uh, the, what I'm going to show you, it's exactly the same experience that our users have. And once a user enters or logs in into the system, uh, he is landed into the uh, dashboard uh, of the system where he can see the usability about uh, devices. And uh, we, are, of course, uh, 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 you, you can understand with We have multiple devices connected to environment that all these devices can be eventually uh, uh, can, can be used by users to uh, execute tests either manually or automatically. Right. So in the dashboard, he can see a lot of statistics of devices being in use, uh, users that are logged in, devices that are in error or on maintenance. It's configurable, very easy to understand the current status of the uh, of the environment use. Usage. Then if you go to the devices, we can see actually all the devices that are connected to the system. I, uh, I would like to emphasize that all these devices are physical devices connected through USB cables to our servers. And eventually these devices are used to execute the test again, either manually or automatically. I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, to show you uh, how you can do it uh, uh, with uh, manual testing, how you can use, sorry, use the devices with, uh, for manual testing as well as for automation. So let's uh, open one of the devices, okay? When I click on the open button, uh, the real-time reflection of the screen of the device will appear in my working machine. Okay, so any operation that I will perform on the uh, uh, screen in my browser will eventually be executed on the device itself. Okay, so if I uh, swipe the device or, or I go to the home button, uh, it will. Uh, if I uh, look, if I looked on the device at the same time, we would see the same changes on the screen. Uh, on the right hand side, there are physical buttons to control the device. 
such as home button, unlock button, change orientation, increase, decrease volume. On the left hand side, there are multiple advanced features that will allow you to create advanced use cases, such as device location simulation. You can provide coordinates for latitude and longitude, and device will think that it's based in specific location. Okay, very useful tool for uh, uh, maybe advertisement or, or pushing some notification to the device if device enters to specific area. Okay, it might be polygon, might be rectangle, uh, um, uh, different use cases. This uh, also, of course, very useful for. Uh, uh, taxi and uh, driving mobile applications. The next feature is uh, uh, simulate device uh, 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 capture image capturing. So you, uh, if you have uh, uh, functionality in your application such as uh, barcode scanning or QR code scanning, it's uh, uh, very useful for payment applications or for airlines you know to scan the uh, barcode of the of the boarding uh, pass so you can uh, uh, create a, a test case where you will get to the screen where you need to to to, to take the picture but instead of taking the picture you can provide as input image that you create prepared in advance and uh, if you want to automate this uh, you can prepare multiple images for example uh, good for good if a few for good inputs few for bad inputs and to test that your application behaves properly and uh, responds properly to each one of the input you can uh, uh, mock authentication with fingerprint or even face ID you can open a debugging session from your local uh, development environment to remote devices you can capture network traffic coming in and out of the device recorded it to a hard file or pickup file for further investigation you can record video of the device of the test and if for example i'm a tester i want to reproduce some test failure okay i can start a video i can open uh, I, I can perform my uh, test then i can stop uh, the video i can then download the video and send uh, this video to developers for further investigation uh, in addition to functionality testing, uh, our platform also contains uh, capabilities of performance testing and accessibility testing. So for performance testing, I'm, I'm uh, in, in, in manual mode, it's less uh, uh, useful, but I'm just, I, I just uh, want to show you what you can eventually achieve with uh, uh, performance testing. So we start uh, performance transaction and by transaction we mean any atomic operation okay so uh, it, it might be uh, clicking on link or it might be uh, clicking on some button okay uh, so now we are recording and uh, let's just click on uh, one of the links okay let's uh, uh, stop recording we can provide here a name and uh, eventually what we will have we will have uh, after after we save the report, uh, uh, the report uh, with all information about this transaction will be generated. So we will have the video of the screen, what happened uh, of the, of this transaction, what happened on the uh, on the screen. We will have duration of the transaction and all the uh, uh, metrics such as CPU, memory, uh, uh, network consumed, and battery consumption. In addition to that. Uh, we will also provide you with tools for further investigation in case any specific transaction or any specific operation takes more time than expected. So, for example, if login operation is expected to be accomplished by uh, uh, at, at most two and a half, three seconds, and in some nightly build, the uh, duration uh, uh jumped to uh, 10 seconds so there was some change there are probably some there is some regression so you can then uh, identify it using our platform to compare the current result towards the uh, results from previous builds right and for to to start the investigation we provide you with all the tools that you can identify or pinpoint very quickly which operation takes more time 
and to, 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 to go to your code and identify what was the change and what's the problem. Okay. Uh, so let's get back to the uh, device. Uh, also on the device, we monitor continuously battery CPU uh, memory. We can also uh, go not on the uh, device level, but to drill down to the, uh, the application level. Okay, so we can find the application that we want to test and to monitor the matrix just uh, consumed by this specific application. And in addition, we also uh, can uh, create different network profiles, such as 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, good Wi-Fi, bad Wi-Fi, no network at all, and uh, uh, test that the test ap that application behaves properly uh, while using different network profiles. Uh, this is about manual testing. The next tab is browsers and simulators. So we provide a platform not only for uh, testing mobile apps, but also for testing web applications. And we support all the uh, uh, popular browsers uh, available out there. So it's Chrome browser, uh, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, and uh, Edge. Uh, we can uh, install different versions per each browser. For for example, for Chrome, we have multiple. We can have multiple versions, uh, both for Windows and for uh, uh, Mac. We can go to Mac, and I can launch my, uh, Safari. Apologies. We can go to Safari. I can launch Safari session, even though I'm running on Windows machine. Okay, so we don't need any specific hardware to test uh, uh, to test our uh, uh, applications on Safari or on uh, uh, um, uh, I, I, iPhone devices. Okay, we can do it uh, even using Windows machine. So uh, let's just go to just one of the uh, websites. Uh, the experience working with the uh, remote. A, a, a web session is exactly the same as uh, working with the session uh, locally. Uh, we can open development tools. We can uh, uh, browse, uh, uh, browse through elements. We can uh, uh, go to network tab, to resources tab, to timeline, and uh, exactly the same experience as working with the Safari, with the Safari or any other session. Uh, locally. Uh, also here we can uh, capture video or screenshots, very, very uh, useful and handy solution. Uh, the next tab is uh, uh, execution of uh, automation tests. So on the right hand side, I have a, a example test which is written in use, using Appium API. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to launch this test a few times on uh, Apple devices, and I'm going also to launch this test a few times on Android devices. What will happen eventually? The system will receive the request of executing tests on the devices. We'll find the devices according to available devices according to the criteria that I have uh, passed to this system. So it might be uh, iOS devices, it might be Android devices, it might be phone or tablet or any specific uh, manufacturer of uh, uh, of uh, Android devices, for example, or specific uh, uh, iOS version. Okay, and after uh, the test uh, being executed. We will receive. We will. Uh, uh, the system will generate a report per each test execution. Okay. So let's uh, just open one of the reports. Uh, the report will. Each report will contain video of the test on the right hand side, which will will also contain all the steps that were. It, executed during the test on the left hand side. We can start playing the video. And you will see that video is fully correlated to the steps. We also collect logs in the device. Everything is, is, is progressing together. And uh, uh, as, as, as I told you, uh, we provide with all the tools, not just for execution, but also for investigation. So in case some test fails, you know what happened on the screen, in which step it failed, 
and also what's uh, uh, what happened in the log right so if there are any errors or exceptions you will uh, we will collect and provide it to you in logs uh, the application tab it will contain all the application it's sort of a local repository for uh, applications that is that will be that will be available to be installed on devices for test execution so once uh, for example, you, you 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 created a new build of your mobile application, right? So you want to test it. What you will need to do is to provide this uh, a new APK or, or IPA file to Expirit, uh, to to our system to Expirit, uh, and and then this application will be available for installation on devices for testing. No manual intervention is required. You can configure your Jenkins. Or, or any other other CI tool that you that you use, to after after you build your application, it can automatically upload newly built application to Expert Test. Okay, and uh, uh, then once your test will be uh, uh, will start execution, the tests will install the, uh, the the newly built application on the devices. So everything is done automatically no manual intervention very very robust system for uh, big enterprises with multiple teams and last but not least we have a, a very robust uh, uh, framework of uh, administration and uh, uh, monitoring and, and configuration so you can define users you can define different projects assign users to project you can define devices to devices groups and then allocate these device groups to different projects it's in order to this is all done in order to provide you with full flexibility of how you want to manage the inventory of the devices uh, and meet the requirements of your organization in addition to that we provide multiple configuration settings for uh, networking email and and the cloud services that are provided by our system to your organization uh, very important to mention that uh, our system is available for uh, it can be installed on premise so it can actually uh, be allocated in your in, in the uh, 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 network of your organization and our solution is fully available as managed solution and we have uh, labs in uh, Europe, in Singapore, in United States, we can also set up a hybrid mode between on-premise installation and uh, SaaS environment, let's say. Uh, uh, th from user perspective, user will uh, see just a, a one interface, no no different environments everything will be placed and, and stored in one place I'm just loading up uh, the uh, multi-region environment and uh, another thing is that if you have teams uh, geographically spread around the globe so you can have devices for example in uh, in Europe for, uh, 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 for for teams that are based in Spain you might have uh, devices based uh, in US for teams that are based in uh, uh, United States and each team will use the devices that are most close to their location so we support also multi-region environment as well on the right hand side you can see that if I go to devices now I can see all devices available to uh, this environment you, you see devices in UK and you can see devices in Germany you have devices in United States but then I can also go and just fetch devices which are located in just one region okay uh, by the way this functionality is not provided by any other uh, competitor of ours it's unique to Experitus uh, I'd like to uh, switch to the presentation and uh, uh, it take you through uh, uh, additional um, uh, tools that you provide as part of the platform so um, 
we uh, have uh, multiple uh, tools and plugins that uh, will help developers and testers to uh, access devices remotely from their development environment okay and uh, uh, that uh, also can create tests easily uh, with these plugins so i uh, i will just show you plugin uh, eclipse plugin okay very handy tool for our developers so once uh, i i guess uh, uh, technical guys that present on this session they uh, know what eclipse is it's a, a development environment uh, used by many um, engineers uh, for Java development, not just Java, but uh, mostly for Java. Uh, so we have a plugin called Appium Studio. You can download this plugin from uh, uh, Eclipse uh, Marketplace. Once you install the plugin on the in the toolbar on top here, where is my mouse? You will have additional menu called Appium Studio. Okay. So then, what you can do is to connect your local environment two remote devices by the way these remote devices can be located in your network but you just access them remotely within your network all these devices can be also uh, located in SaaS, right it, it doesn't matter from our perspective you just need to provide the ip address of the environment as well as the access key which is unique to your username in our uh, system and the the IDE will be linked to this environment. So once you have done this setup, you will receive a list of devices that are available for your usage. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see that currently I'm connected to the environment with two devices available uh, for me. Okay. So then what I can do, I can click on one of the devices. Uh, double click and uh, uh, what will happen is the same real-time reflection that I already showed to you previously will open in my development environment. I can uh, control fully control the device. I can open the application that I want to test. I can start recording session. And from this point, of course, I can provide the, I, I, I need to provide the uh, name for this session. And from this point, any action I perform on the application will be recorded as a step in the in the context of this recording session. So I click on the username uh, text box. A step is added. I provide company. I, it will be recorded as part of the step. I click on the password text box. Another step is added. I click on the login button. Another step is added, and so on and so forth until I accomplish my entire uh, test very useful tool uh, very intuitive uh, no need to know uh, almost any programming to record the test and uh, you know very uh, easy to convert manual test into the automated one in just uh, a few minutes uh, after we accomplished recording the uh, test what, I, what we can do is to go to the each one of the steps that you recorded, uh, to click on the test, review them. If needed, you can also change the, uh, uh, the steps or any settings or any inputs that we provided uh, during the uh, uh, step recording. And as a next step, we will uh, choose all the steps, click the run test button, and the test will start automatic execution of the steps on the device which is reserved by us, okay? So no uh, uh, manual intervention. You see uh, buttons are clicked, uh, the fields are populated uh, until, the, uh, until the test actually if, uh, approaches its uh, end. And uh, uh, yeah, and it's a sort of... Uh, 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 gives the control uh, back to the user, okay? Now, behind the scenes, there is no magic. What we do, we generate Java code, okay? It's a uh, Java code with uh, Appium uh, API. What you can do now is uh, to create a new class in your Java project, 
okay you can provide uh, uh, and, and of course you need to provide the name to the class you just copy paste the newly created java code to this class okay and now you're already in the context of your java project you can uh, change the code you can add more functionality, you can remove unnecessary functionality, uh, you can uh, 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 do, uh, well, as a developer, you can do whatever is uh, needed to tweak the test or adjust the test, right? And then uh, what we can do is to execute the same test, uh, but under the context of the java project okay so i now execute it as a j unit test uh, uh, the same happens so first it's a preparation uh, phase then the same test will be executed on the uh, reserved device by me right and we'll see also fields are populated and uh, buttons are clicked uh, after after that what is left is to commit code to your source repository, probably Git. Jenkins will pick up the change, uh, will start uh, execution or build of your application and, and, and testing package. Then Jenkins can give a, a, a order to experiments to execute tests on newly application, uh, on new, newly built application. So from recording of manual tests till the uh, fully uh, uh, automatically generated report on uh, devices, just a matter of 15, 20 minutes. Of course, it depends on the test. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to share with you is that uh, it's a preview of the uh, beta program which is already open to our customers and uh, it was not uh, present in the demo that i uh, shared with you so what we are creating right now is uh, the bot functionality so what it will do is that if you want to create uh, 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 tests for the application but you don't have any at the moment and that you want to create automated tests right so what you can do you can provide the application to us what bot will do it will identify all the screens of your application and how and what's needed to be done in order to reach each one of these screens. So it, it, it's just a zoom in to the same function, to the same uh, uh, view from a previous slide. So for example, the, uh, on top we have the login screen, okay? So if we provide bad credentials, so we go to the left uh, screen, and of course you create a test in here. If we uh, provide good credentials, so we go to the right, and there are a lot of options uh, uh, that that bot will discover. So it go to make payment, it go, it, it can go to uh, other functionality, and so on and so on. So we sort of build a graph of all screens and all uh, actions needed to be performed Sorry, in order Alex, to reach. We are getting out of time. You still have some time, some minutes for uh, until the questions and answers, but we are running out of time. So uh, <laughs> use some time extra, but you can, we'll still change to the question and answers. Uh, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's two minutes and I'm uh, done here. Perfect, so perfect. Uh, good. So it kind of creates a full graph of that. And as a next step, we create automatically automated tests out of this graph okay we're sort of traversing through all this graph through the entire graph creating the all the tests and then you can click just one of the tests right and can understand okay we need to provide these inputs we can provide we need we click these buttons and you can uh, uh, play with the inputs and outputs and uh, put alerts very very uh important functionality that we will provide to our customers in order to expedite the ability to create automated tests to be run automatically during the night on applications that have no testing at all uh i'm i'm done carlos okay, perfect 
Bueno, we will, eh, empezamos con las preguntas. Eh, tenemos aquí algunas, eh, una en inglés, la primera que, hemos, que nos ha aparecido. ¿vale? Eh, bueno, la, la voy a traducir. Eh, ¿Es posible eh, subir la, el, el binario eh, automáticamente o es necesario utilizar eh, alguna clase de herramienta o el plan en web para subir el, el APK o el IPA que se haya generado? Did you, got, did, did you get it? So the question is, Perdona, that if it's, it's possible to um, to upload the binary directly or, sorry, Carlos, say again. Uh, or we will need to upload, uh, for example, by the web that you saw in the on the workshop. Yes. So uh, I think that I, I hope I understood the question. Uh, I will I will share my screen again. Uh, what is possible? You can go to the application and just upload the binaries uh, through the upload button. You can just drag and drop the created application. By the way, it's a good question, very useful functionality. So if you just uh, uh, build your application locally on your machine, on your laptop, on your uh, wor uh, working machine, doesn't matter. So you can just upload it into a, a, a environment and can uh, run test either manually or automatically. And, and I think that they also say that if you can do uh, through Jenkins to or any other uh, continuous integration uh, application to blow out also the binary, right? Absolutely. It can be done through REST API. We have a very robust REST API to manage the entire environment, to manage users, to manage, to manage product, to execute tests, and also to retrieve result, uh, maybe to export result to other reporting system. It's also possible. Okay. Vale. Nos preguntan también, eh, ¿cómo pueden los dispositivos móviles SaaS acceder a los servidores backend de los bancos? If you can, uh, I, you can I translate so, it. Yes. How can you access uh, you... It to the back servers in the in any bank? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a very good question. So uh, we provide with uh, uh, dedicated devices to our customers. Our customers can um, uh, uh, set the site to site VPN between dedicated environment run by uh, digital AI to backend systems of the bank. Uh, we have done it uh, so many times, and uh, we'll be glad to work with your info security. Uh, 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 department in order to set everything up. We have uh, uh, document. We have certification of ISO 27001 as well as SOC 2. So everything will go through secured channels. Okay. Eh, también nos preguntan, eh, ¿cuáles son los las diferenciadores clave de la solución de digital punto ahí continuous testing respecto a otras soluciones disponibles? Y además, ¿qué, ¿qué modelos se pueden establecer en el entorno SaaS? Ok, so the question is, which are the, the, the main differentiators of our solution in compared to, to others in the market? And which mm -hmm. uh, uh, configurations you can establish in, in the SaaS model? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good question. There are many. There are many. So uh, most of them I actually mentioned as part of the uh, demo. So uh, we provide with the platform uh, to support big organizations. We have a very scalable platform. We have customers running from few tens of devices to a few hundreds of devices. We have environments of 500 and 600 devices for big organizations, predominantly from banking environment. Everything, of course, is secured, which is a second differentiator of uh, uh, our solution uh, we provide with performance testing that i just showed to you as well as accessibility testing in order to be compliant with certain uh, regulations of european union no one else can provide these things on premise and a SaaS uh, uh, environment are uh, mm -hmm. uh, supported as well as hybrid multi-region and uh, also, we have a very uh, efficient and uh, cost-effective solution. So yeah. it's uh, very important uh, to uh, to say. And um, yeah, we'll be glad let, to. Let, let me complement your, your answer. Uh, Absolutely. Um, well, what I've commented, we have all types of tests. It's a solution totally scalable. We have a model based on cloud private, on cloud shared, on premise or hybrid. 
que se pueden gestionar todos los dispositivos de la misma forma. Eh, después eh, tenemos capacidades, por ejemplo, de inyectar carga desde diferentes CPDs. Pero es que además, eh, si vosotros tenéis alguna solución perfecta o con mucha salsa, eh, simplemente con, con, eh, contactarnos porque os garantizamos que la renovación de esos mismos dispositivos con una solución que tiene más capacidades, como mínimo tendréis un 25% de descuento de lo que estáis pagando ahora mismo. ¿eh? Es la política que nosotros tenemos. Si estáis trabajando con, con alguna solución que consideréis perfecta o eh, similar, comentadnos y, y garantizamos que por un precio un 25% eh, inferior tendréis la solución completa que acabáis de ver con todo lo que hemos comentado de factores diferenciadores. Vale, comentar también, eh, nos hacen la pregunta, ¿es posible también hacer pruebas sobre navegadores móvil o, sobre, o solo sobre navegadores de escritorio? So, is it possible to, to test uh, browse, uh, browsers in uh, mobile browsers or only desktop browsers? No, no, it's absolutely possible to test uh, uh, mobile browsers. Uh, we, we just need to use the devices for that. And we have uh, all range of the devices. You can install any browser you want on the device. Everything is possible. Vale. También nos preguntan, ¿cuál es el precio de la plataforma? ¿Es por tiempo o por sesión? Es por número de dispositivos. Eh, nosotros licenciamos el producto por número de dispositivos. Eh, esos dispositivos pueden estar eh, de nuevo on-premise o en una eh, cloud privada que nosotros gestionamos y eh, no eh, contabilizamos ni accesos ni tiempo, nada. Solo se paga por número de dispositivos. Y, y evidentemente con los dispositivos disponéis de todas las herramientas para la creación eh, de, de, de pruebas, de inyección de esa prueba, reporting, etc. ¿Sí? Pero solo cargamos por dispositivo. Y el precio de ese dispositivo, yo les garantizo yo, que es bastante más barato que el de otras soluciones. De acuerdo. Nos preguntan también si eh, se limpian los dispositivos entre las ejecuciones de las pruebas. So the question is if uh, we clean the, the devices after the execution of the different tests. Yes, absolutely. Very good question, uh, because eventually uh, the testers want to know that they run on clean environment and we do clean uh, devices or uh, between tests or after each test execution. It's a configuration uh, available for that and the user can choose from uh, multiple uh, variations of how to perform clean of the device between test execution. Muy bien. Nos preguntan también si es posible acceder a la, de, a la configuración de los dispositivos y hacer modificaciones sobre ella. You got it? Because, eh, eh, es que Alex habla un poco español, está, está aprendiendo. So the, the, the question is if uh, it's possible to modify the configuration of a, a mobile device. Oh, yeah, it's also a great question. So, uh, as we provide the dedicated devices, so it's possible that our users will be able to change the configuration and yeah the configuration of the device as per their requirements it's also one of the key differentiators of our competitors so that with dedicated devices we provide this uh, session with uh, many other uh, web-based uh, device farms uh, it's just not possible muy bien nos dicen también los dispositivos alquilados son privados o se comparten con otros usuarios So, eh, eh, los, los dispositivos son, eh, si están en, en cloud privada, son eh, exclusivos para el uso de, de, de vosotros. Es decir, nadie más los puede utilizar. Tenemos un modelo de uso compartido de dispositivos, ¿vale? Pero eh, eh, cuando se trabaja con los dispositivos en cloud privada, además de toda la seguridad, la seguridad y certificación de seguridad que, que, que ofrecemos, los dispositivos obviamente son de uso exclusivo de, de los clientes. Sí que es cierto que eh, tenemos otros dispositivos que están en cloud eh, compartida, eh, simplemente porque muchas veces se tienen que realizar pruebas de regresión sobre un gran número de dispositivos y tenemos que estar en ese modelo. ¿no? Pero los dispositivos de cloud privada, evidentemente, son propios, nadie más los utiliza. Y por último, porque además ya nos estamos quedando prácticamente sin tiempo, eh, ¿se puede integrar con GitLab? Sí. Vale, pues eh, yo creo que esto es todo porque además ya justo nos hemos quedado 
totalmente sin tiempo, así que bueno, agradecer a todos los que habéis estado viendo este workshop, además a Alex y a Jordi por, por la presentación, así que bueno, pues muchas gracias a todos y gracias por asistir. A vosotros. Yes. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be in our booth and uh, I will be glad to chat with you. Eso es. Si se ha quedado alguna pregunta, lo podéis enviar tanto a los ponentes como directamente a marketing.tesistemas.com y desde ahí eh, todas las preguntas, digamos, serán redirigidas y podréis acceder a tanto a los ponentes como pues, resolver cualquier duda que podáis tener. Será un placer. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Muchas gracias.